All right, guys, so a little change of pace. Today we're gonna to be working on my 1998 Buick Park Avenue Ultra. A little bit different than uh, the F bodies we're usually working on. But the goal today is to remove and install a new AC compressor. So I'm gonna show you with how I started here. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take this inner fender liner off. Where'd my light go? I don't know. We shouldn't really need it though. So in here, from the factory, there's gonna be a plastic piece that covers this. Um, mine actually conveniently got ripped off on the highway, so good for me. We're gonna do most of our work either through here or from the bottom of the car. That's gonna be the plan. There's my light. So that's gonna be the plan. So if you if you if your car still has this plastic piece, you're gonna to wanna to take it off. A couple fasteners here, a couple up there, should come out. Um, once you do that, I was really worried that I was gonna to have to remove the serpentine belt, and I still might have to, but the serpentine belt on these cars, especially the supercharged ones, are really difficult to get off, because I would actually have to take the supercharger belt off and the serpentine belt off, which requires the removal of this motor mount down there, where those, you see those two studs coming up? That's the, that's the motor mount, or I guess some people call it the torque mount or whatever, but it supports the engine. So they actually replace these two belts you have to remove that motor mount and it's a real pain because you have to support the engine and lower it and it's a big big job so I'm trying to avoid that so what I've done is I've taken this here 15 millimeter ratchet and put a pipe on for extra leverage and this pulley right there that's the serpentine belt tensioner and I you set it to loosen and you rotate the wrench this way to the uh, that would be counterclockwise and um, I loosened the belt and I was able to get the belt off of the AC compressor. As you see here, the belt is now off of the pulley. So I'm hoping that I can just get my wrench in there and loosen up the mounting bolts and pull the AC compressor out. Of course, it's not quite that simple because if we climb under the car, we're going to see this. So we have that one bolt that holds the uh, hose block on. We have those two hoses that are connected. I always call those a hose block. I don't know what they're actually called. But it's got that one bolt in the middle that holds it on. So we'll take that out. And um, if your car still has refrigerant, when you take that bolt out, you're gonna hear a big because that's where it's coming out. Um, I just did this AC compressor swap on my V6 Firebird and my car had no refrigerant in it. So when I popped it out, it just went for like two seconds. Um, this car, I don't really know how much refrigerant's in it. I don't think very much. I think it has a pretty substantial leak so I'm gonna undo that bolt and just kind of clear the garage for a few minutes. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you're supposed to be breathing in Freon, but, uh, but like I said, I don't really think there's much Freon in this car anyway. Um, then we have this bolt here on the bottom that holds that uh, wire loom for the uh, oil level sensor. So I'll be removing that bolt just to get that out of the way. And then it's got that bolt uh, at about the three o'clock position on the compressor. It looks like it bolts to the Oh, it looks like that makes it into the little the little AC compressor bracket. So there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could take the whole bracket off. I don't, it shouldn't really be necessary, but we'll see. I'm not gonna take the bracket off at first. I'm just gonna try to pull the AC compressor out by itself. And I'm hoping that I can fit it out through that passenger fender well, but um, we'll see, we'll, we'll get started on here. I'm glad I was able to get the belt off the pulley. So that was a win. Um, so I guess now we'll start with undoing these bolts in the back. Uh, I don't know what size they are, I'll have to report that later. But um, there should be three mounting bolts on the front. One on the bottom, one on the side, and one on the top. At like the six, six o'clock, nine o'clock, and twelve o'clock positions. Um, so we'll do that, and hopefully at that point we just put the new compressor in and bolt all the old stuff back onto it and start charging the thing up and hope that it works. Unfortunately, this car will have to do the blend door as well, but one battle at a time. So now that we've kind of see what we've got going on here, I'm going to go grab my new compressor from the, in the house, and uh, I'll kind of show you guys a little more what's going on. All right, fellas, so here's the new compressor. It's a Delphi OEM replacement. Came, got it from, uh, from Rock Auto. Came in this big Delphi box. It was actually much better packaged than my Denso compressor that I put on my V6 Firebird. Uh, but here's here's kind of the whole ordeal here. So the in-car position 
viewed from the fender well is going to be more like this, where we have a bolt on top, bolt on the side, bolt on the bottom, holding it into the bracket. And then this is where our, uh, what do you want to call it thing, a connector is going to be. Now it did come with these little uh, new O-rings, so I'll, I'll use these. My Denso compressor from my Firebird did not come with those, so that's plus for the Delphi. So yeah, the in-car position of it is, is like that. Just like that, yep. So viewing it from this angle, we are viewing it the same way here. So we can take a gander at the back of it here. So as you can see, it's got little, contains peg oil and stuff. But um, this is the bolt that holds the two, or no, this is the bolt that holds the two hoses on. This is the bolt on the bottom that has the wire connector bracket holder thing. And then this is what holds the compressor to the bracket from the back of the uh, compressor. And this one I believe is not used on the Park Avenue. So we're gonna take this out, this out, this out. Again, once you take this one out, this, is, this will come off and it'll go poof. So just be careful. Um, this car, I don't think it's gonna be doing a whole lot of poof-ing because there's really not any compressor, uh, any refrigerant in it. So make sure to remove this connector because if the weight of the compressor pulls on that, it will almost certainly break so I'm gonna start off with just pulling that off and out of the way on the, on the old compressor, just so I don't break that connector and make more work for myself. But that's gonna be the plan is three bolts on the front, three bolts on the back, connector, don't inhale too much refrigerant, that's bad. Or is it, I don't know, I mean, I'm not a refrigerant expert. But uh, I also got this here, this is the AC blend door. I got an AC Delco one, it was quite expensive. But it looks like a lot of work and I really don't want to put a crappy part in there and have to do it again. But the, uh, the passenger side of air conditioning when recharged, it works okay, but the driver's side always blows hot. Usually an indicator that the blend door is bad. So I'm gonna have to take that panel out and replace the blend door and it's gonna be all kinds of fun. But I'm not gonna worry about the blend door at the moment. Today's compressor day. So let's work on getting the old one out. Again, like I said, I'm gonna start off with this connector. I just think that's, uh, better for everybody. So let's start off with the connector. Let's do the three bolts on the back, three bolts on the front, and see if we can fish it out of there. And I'm, I'm really hoping I don't have to take off anything else. But uh, we'll see how it goes. All right guys, so there was actually a little bit of refrigerant in there, so, but not very much, so. Very minor environmental disaster here. The right way to do it would be to professionally evacuate the system and c collect all the refrigerant stuff, whatever. Okay, there's like two ounces of refrigerant in this car right now, so not a big deal. But anyway, I figured out the size of the bolts. Uh, the bottom one's a 15. The bolt for this block's a 15. I believe this one's a 13. So 15, 15, 13 is what you're going to need for the back. Mine weren't on there very tight. It came off there pretty easy. Uh, it just was an open-ended wrench. And I, I used the, well, it was a closed-ended of the open-ended wrench. But um, I did that because I, I was having trouble fitting a socket with a ratchet in there. But um, even with just a basic wrench, it was very easy. So let's do that. Oh, I forgot to pull the connector off. I should do that. So we're gonna pull the connector off and then the three mounting bolts and hopefully the thing just comes right out. But uh, usually it's not quite that simple. So we'll see. Guys, I got all the stuff off the back of the compressor. This was a 15, 15, 13. Uh, everything came off there surprisingly easy, almost too easy. Um, kind of worries me a little bit. I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna run into some roadblock later on. But now the only thing holding the thing into the car should be just the three mounting bolts and the connector. So we'll see how difficult those are to get to. And uh, once I get those off, I'll report back and hopefully get this compressor in that car and some cold AC, at least on the passenger side, until I uh, re <laughs> replace the blend door. Right, fellas, now this might be like the only useful part of this video to you, but I think it's the most important. So the connector, it's kind of tricky to get off. It's really hard to see, even, even with me. I'm sure on the camera it's even harder. The connector's from up here, right? Now I was thinking I could get to it from the wheel well. I can reach it, but I honestly, I really like to use a screwdriver on those kind of connectors to lift up on both tabs. So from the, uh, from the fender well, I wasn't having much luck. So I did end up doing it from the top. Now what, did I, what I ended up doing was I fed the screwdriver in between these two hoses, the radiator hose and whatever this hose is, I fed the screwdriver in there and was able to up on both uh, sides of the connector. There's one on this side, one on this side. 
and I just went like this, pried it up just very gently, and the connector came right out. So definitely, I think going, putting a screwdriver in between these two hoses here is the way to do it. So now we're gonna uh, take the three mounting bolts on the front off, and uh, hopefully that goes smoothly. Guys, as you can see, I got the old compressor out. Uh, the bottom and the side bolt I got from the fender well, wasn't too bad. Used a quarter inch ratchet. The top one, I used the same ratchet, but I got through the engine bay up under the, uh, I put my wrench up under the coil pack here. I went on top of the radiator hose and it, it wasn't too bad. It ended up coming out with you know, relative ease. Um, what I'm really not happy about is the stock one has a stud that uses a nut to uh, hold the refrigerant lines on. This one obviously does not, and it didn't come with a bolt to put in here. So I'm really rather angry about that because now that means I can't do it as well as the stock one was. Um, luckily, I just did the AC compressor on my V6 Firebird, and it came with this little like uh, shipping bolt just to hold the plug on there. This this Delphi one had just this on there. My other one came with a little metal thing with this bolt. Um, so this bolt does thread in there pretty well. I don't know if it's going to be long enough to actually hold the refrigerant lines on, but we're going to have to try it. We don't really have much of a choice because the stock one uses a stud and obviously that does not compatible. I can't put the stock nut on a hole that's, you know, not a stud. So I tried to get this out, but it's not really coming out. So I think I'm kind of screwed there. So I'm just going to have to try to, uh, try to use this nut that came with my Firebird AC compressor and hope that that works. But I guess now the plan is, um, the plan is just to put this in there. I, I fed the stock AC compressor out through the fender well. It actually came out, you know, again, with relative ease. Took a little bit of finesse, but I was able to get it out through this hole. So I'm hoping that the uh, new one can go in through the same way. But um, other than other than the difference between the stud and this hole here, seems like everything's the same. And I looked through all the boxes, I didn't see that it came with any bolt or anything, any screw, any stud to put in there. So I'm really pretty angry about that, but it is what it is, I guess. We're gonna hope for the best. Hope that this random bolt that came with my other AC compressor is long enough. But um, just keep in mind if you're buying a, a Delphi, which is very odd because the stock one is also a Delphi. So I think it's really weird that there would be this difference here. And you know, I got it, I said it was for a 1998 Park Avenue Ultra on Rock Auto, but this is what they sent me. So kind of annoying. Other than this, they appear to be absolutely identical, but you know, kind of annoying. We're gonna hope that this little screw works, does the job. But um, let's see if we can get this new one in there. I'm gonna get the new one in there, do the front three mounting bolts first to hold it steady. And then I'm going to uh, start plugging stuff into the back of it. And I, I am going to use the new gaskets that came with the Delphi one. Because the old ones are, you know, 20, almost 25 years old now. So I'm going to use the new gaskets, but I'm going to reuse everything else factory. So let's get started. Okay, so we are laying under the car here. And uh, I was able to wiggle the new compressor in there. And uh, I lined up two of the bolts, which by default means that the third one will also be lined up. And I slid them onto the studs that are onto the bracket here, and it went right on. Seems like it's fitting okay. Um, so now I, I just have these, uh, the mounting nuts, uh, finger tight, just to hold it in place. So now we're going to try to put, um, put the new thing in here. Looking at that hose block, I, I really don't think the bolt that I have is going to be long enough, so I might have to go to the store and get a longer bolt or something. I'm really not thrilled about that. But um, well, we're gonna we're gonna do it here. Looks like everything's going okay. Otherwise, got the mounting bolts on. Just have the oil level sensor wire bolt, the back bracket bolt, and then this hose um, the hose block fastener, whatever that ends up being. Then I'll put the connector on, and we should be ready to start charging it. Well, once I put the belt back on there. But yeah, I think that uh, that hose block bolt that used to be a stud is really going to make this hard. But we're going to try to get that on there and see if it threads in at all.
All right, guys, we're going to be wrapping up the uh, AC compressor video here. Uh, right here, this is actually about three months after the rest of the clips that I filmed. I ended up kind of running into some stuff and um, I never ended up finishing the video, so I'm going to finish it today. I had filmed the beginning of the video in about uh, late May, early June. Now it is the very end of August. But uh, the good news is the AC has been working the whole summer. I basically, I just finished up where we left off and then I evacuated the system using a Harbor Freight manifold gauge, hooked it up to, you know, these high pressure and low pressure ports, evacuated the system, which there wasn't really anything left in it, so that wasn't a big deal. And then I refilled the system with uh, some Amazon refrigerant cans. And that was about it. It's been working pretty decent ever since. It's not perfect. I'm sure if I used uh, you know better refrigerant or maybe a more uh, in-depth uh, filling process or something, maybe it would be a little colder. But it, honestly, it works good enough for me. It's not uh, it's not like a new car or anything, but it's definitely cool there. So it keeps me keeps me from sweating on my way home from work and whatnot. So all in all, that really wasn't too bad of a swap. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to finish that up. Finish the video up. I felt kind of bad because I meant to do that at the beginning of the summer and. It never really ended up happening, but it's good now. Now I have all the other stuff to do on the engine. All the other projects in the car. And <laughs> it never ends. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. I'd be uh, happy to try and answer them. Thanks for watching, fellas.